Yo, gang. So I was waiting on this one, bro. Um, I was told that DJU had an interview coming out with Ki Mama, and I'm like, I'm definitely gonna check it out. But I didn't know like when it was coming, how soon or whatever. And I was scrolling YouTube yesterday. I'm like, damn. So that shit out. I said this at full interview. I'm like, damn that shit out or whatever. I didn't know. I'm like, this is the first thing I'm gonna check out tomorrow, like for real, cause it, it's gonna give me a whole different point of view, a okay, KI, because this her mama. So it, I'm pretty, I'm a hundred percent sure, or I would think that it'll be different point of views than what Butter say about her, what the documentary say about her, or it, just anybody speak on her in general. You feel me? Uh, so I don't wanna do too much talking, man. Let's get into it. And see what's to it. DJ, you go crazy. DJ UTV, let them know who we got in the building. It's Mama KI on the scene. Mama KI, what you want, gang? Man, I'm ganging it up with the red cup. <laughs> Can't do nothing but gang gang all day long. Well, welcome to DJ UTV. It's definitely a blessing to have you. How you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good. Thanks for having me, DJ. For so that, for so. Well, you know, um, we hear about a young lady named K.I. so much throughout the blogs, interviews, even rap songs, right? Yep. And, um, um, you know, she's not here to, you know, tell her side of the story. Um, we've interviewed her brother, shout out G.I. Joe. Uh, but I, I just I was just trying to get into some real Chirac history, and, and and you came to my mind. I you said her brother GI Joe. I ain't never heard of GI who GI Joe is. Chirac history, and, and and you came to my mind. So I'm so glad that you came to sit on our couch tonight and share with us your story. No problem. So can we take it from the top, Mama K.I., and can you tell us where you from? I'm from 63rd, originally, Chi-Town, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. Pop your shit. Okay, 63rd. <laughs> she gave you niggas the zip, fuck you tell. 63rd. <laughs> Is that the famous 63rd we that, hear about all the time? That's the famous, infamous 63rd. Yes, it is. So 63rd to King Drive? No, no, no. We from St. Lawrence. <laughs> oh, my bad. Yep, the FBG movement. DJ, you was funny as hell. Yeah, for sure. Okay. My grandma owned a house over there for like 60 years. So that, that's St. Lawrence. Really? Yeah. So can you tell us what it was like for you growing up over there? Um, Pretty much it was like the same, but it wasn't as drastic as it was for the millennial kids. But, you know, I went through, you know, phases where, you know, I was a young child, being in shootouts with my daddy and... You know what I'm saying? Seeing drugs being sold, seeing prostitution, all that, you know? So it, it, it wasn't the era that my kids grew up in. It wasn't nothing new. It was just that it was just going, you know, to the 10th power with it, you know? You yeah. know, man probably was on power four or five, but. That was, I was thinking as soon as she said it, like, damn, you went through that shit? For, for K.I. to be who K.I. was? Now, I don't think it's, well, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't 100% know. But it just sounded like she was chilling until uh, was it was Tuka, right? They got killed. And then they say she turned that bitch, that savage on like a motherfucker. But I wonder how much of that did K.I. actually see herself. Because her mama seen a lot growing up. And there ain't no telling when she even had K.I. Was she young? All type of shit. Once the two nineties and the two thousand hits, it was like to the tenth power with everything, with the gangs, with the drugs, with the guns. You know, I done, you know, I got a gun case, you know what I'm saying, when I was young, you know, stuff like that, you know, but it is what it is when it come down to it. So when you was growing up, your parents were in the streets. For sure. Both of them? Yep. Okay. Damn. And how many siblings do you have? I got five siblings. Okay. Yep. And where do you fall within the bunch? Um, I'm the oldest. Okay. Yep. So you big sis. Yep. Okay. Everybody. I'm, mom, I'm mama and big sis. Right. Yep. Okay. So tell us about the mama part. You had to raise your brothers and sisters. 
um, a little bit, you know, like I say, parents in the street. So, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times I was taking care of mama duties with the feeding the kids and, you know, making sure they looking proper to go to school, stuff like that. Not none, none too major. They was always there, but you know, when it came down to the streets, you know, it, that was part of their priorities too. Right. You know, one, one, nothing major, but yeah, I stepped in. Okay. And, um, so you come from a family of five and you, you've had five kids yourself, correct? I did. Okay. Um, how old were you when you had your first child? Um, I was 18. Okay. And can you tell us what that was like, your first pregnancy? Um, you and which know, child was that? That's my oldest son. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um, I ain't gonna mention no names, but right. that's my oldest son. He right up, he he the oldest over uh, GI and KI. Okay. But um, yeah, you know I had him first. You know I, I was kind of like I said I was in the streets myself. Mm -hmm. So like when I had him, the age of 18, young, I had been to the county jail a couple times. You know, like caught a case, and you know, but when I hear gee, imagine being in the streets while you pregnant. It's just, I ain't gonna count. That's one thing. One thing that I'm just happy that I didn't have to go through. Like a lot of people just be over embracing the streets or shit like that, but I never seen nothing cool about that shit, bro, on my soul. But I feel like at the time for me. Cause they come from a different part of the of the city anyway. For me, that shit was all just. What did they, they say the same shit when they were shorties though? Like that shit was all just fun. My fucker wasn't really on that shit. She said it was to the tenth power, but to to them, that shit was just regular shit. But I understand her even seeing that that transition of the streets, bro, is crazy. But imagine being in that shit at eighteen still, you pregnant and shit, bro. I had been to the county jail a couple times. You know, like caught a case and you know, but when I had my first son, you know what I'm saying, I just knew that street shit, that ain't what I want to do. Whether you want to increase I like that though. Get that shit up when you have well, I say just in general, but she had that shorty, she sitting there with just more to live for and, and then she probably got to the point where she like, Man, I don't wanna I see what my people go through in the streets. I ain't really on that and I don't want my child to really see me get on that either. I got a son to raise, you know what I'm saying? And I, I ain't want to be locked up for the rest of my life or, you know what I'm saying, someone did, you know. So he kind of changed my priorities as far as getting out the streets and, um, you know, being a, being a mother right. to, my, to my child. Right. Yeah, and then like a year and a half later, I had K I and G I. so now I got three kids in Pampas. So that definitely, my mindset just totally kind of really changed after that because, you know, not only did I have twins, I got one that's like nine months older than them, and you know, you know, everything gotta be for. Am I tweaking this GI fucking butter? Cause that's his twin, or are they fake twins? I don't be fucking know, bro. But the, I ain't never heard anybody call his ass GI, so what the fuck? But what the fuck? For them now, I can't, I can't live for me no more. Even, even though the money was coming fast with the drugs and the, you know, what I'm saying the streets, but I couldn't, I couldn't live like that, you know. And I didn't want my kids to live like that. Yeah. So I'm here, I'm hearing that, you know, you were involved in the streets at a young age yourself. Um, your parents were, so it's, it sounded like, like this, the cloth that you come from. Right, right, kind of pretty much a product of your environment. Right. You know, I didn't ask to be, I didn't ask to be here. Who asked to be here? Who asked to be born into this or into something like that? Nobody, you know, but when you are, you can't do nothing but adapt because it's either you're going to fold or you're going to roll. So it was like we had to roll, yeah. you know. Yeah. But as you get older, you do realize your mindset changed and you realize I have choices. You know, I can, you know, either make the choice to keep going the wrong route or I can, you know, straighten up and, you know, get it right. She really just said some real shit, bro, because that's why I was saying, like, I'm with the pushing the peace movement, but that shit be tough when you trying to talk to some kids or teenagers, you know what I'm saying, in general, just 18, 19, bro. And they in the streets and they not trying to hear that shit like you wasn't trying to hear that shit. 
You know what I'm saying? So they got to fuck the city up. They got to ruin the neighborhood. They got to kill and be killed and all this shit until they wake up and realize when they get older, like, we want to we wanna push peace. We want to change. But that shit be too late sometimes. You already done fucked up. You already got adjusted to this environment, bro. Then you're going to grow up. Maybe some of them realize, like, all right, this shit wasn't worth it. I say that to say, I just really, that's why I really wish that shit really kicked in, kick in as a youngin. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's rare that a shorty from that type of environment be looking at them niggas and like, y'all really lame as fuck. I wish all the kids really could just hit that age as kids so the kids won't be committing all these crimes in the city and shit, bro. So just looking back, you know, probably, you know, I don't want to, you know, put your age out there, but just looking back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, right? Can you just give us uh, a, 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 a crazy K.I. Mama story uh, growing up on 63rd? What's some, of the, what's some of the mess you was getting into? Man, you know, like, you know, we had a clux coming around or, the, you know, the hypes and, you know, trying to take off with the bags and the stuff like that. We might have to shake some and, you know, we got to get down on a hype or something, you know what I'm saying? Or get somebody some work and they done ran off with the work and, you know, now we got to get down for the money or the work, you know? So yeah, crazy story, 63rd St. Lawrence, Steve's Liquors, you know, shit, we, you know, got down on a female one time, you know, she ended up pulling out a box, cut a slice, one of my girls in the face. So, you know what I'm saying? We had to stomp her till it was no more stomping, you know? at that point but yeah crazy that was one of the crazy stories my girl got cut though so you know i never forget that that was kind of like a traumatization for me you know right. yeah and she's still with us got to today still with it but it looked good she they fixed up good yeah right. yeah they fixed up real good so did you grow up around the same time in the same area with mama duck did y'all yeah. grow up together yeah we didn't grow up together okay um she was from the low but you know, they had people all over. But once we had kids, and our kids was like in the teens, like her daughter, uh, you know what I'm saying, her son, the rapper, uh, they, you know, they moved to that area. Actually on that block, they moved on that block. So like right down the street, across the street. So by me already kind of knowing the people from the low end and Ida B. Wills and all of them, you know, it wasn't none, we clicked, bam, my kids was clicking. Anyway, so, you know, it wasn't nothing for me and Mama Duck to click. That's my girl, you know. Right. Yeah, her, 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 her daughter fought my daughter, fought K.I., and her son fought G.I. before. Like, really? sister, sister, brother, brother gonna fight. Yeah, they had, a, you know, a fist fight before in the hood, you know, when they were shorties. But, yeah, we always remain cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't got nothing but love for Mama Duck. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so now going back to when, you know, you was having your kids, you told us about the first one, and then nine months later is when you had your twins. Right. G.I. And hey, this one of them ones, though. I ain't gonna care. I'm only nine minutes of this motherfucker. I'm really locked in. I ain't gonna care, bro. It be rare when you get an interview, you really locked in. Like, I want to know what Rick the fuck finna really be saying next, And then bro. nine months later is when you had your twins. Right. G.I. and K.I. Right. Boy, girl. Right. Uh, who was born first? Uh, I want to say G.I. G.I. was born first. Okay. Yeah. And then K.I. came how many minutes later? Uh, she was, uh, 13 minutes later. Okay, wow. Yeah. That's pretty close, right? Yeah. He was like 6, 17 p.m. She was like 6, 30 p.m. Yep. Okay. Yeah. K.I. K.I. being born at 6.30 p.m. and being from 63rd is crazy. Yeah, ain't, ain't <laughs> crazy. There. It's crazy. A lot of subliminals. It's crazy. Right? Yeah. Okay, so tell us, though, about <laughs> K.I. as a child. Man, um, K.I. was a sweet child. She always been like a tomboy, though, because she had two big brothers. So if they was jumping off the roof, she was going to jump off the roof. Too, you know what I'm saying? Put on the Easter dress, come back in, it's looking like <laughs> I got it from the Roman seal, you know, rolling around in the dirt, like I say, <laughs> jumping off garage, jumping over fences, you know. So she she was real, real sweet. She was a sweet girl, but she was just kind of tomboyish, you know. She ain't like ponytails and barrettes 
and stuff like that. I used to make a, you know. I ain't gonna cap, bro. I'll be lying if I sit here and say I can't relate to that shit, bro. My soul, Easter, bro, it was like the worst. It's like the worst shit. That, that shit was her saying to her, coming in there with a dirty ass dress on, like, mama. I don't want this shit on. I wanna be fucking having pants and shit on, bro. Playing football with the, my brothers and shit, getting hurt and coming in this motherfucker and hearing y'all say, now you know you ain't supposed to be playing with them boys and shit. She wanna get dirty. She wanna be rough as hell, bro. Like she said, motherfucker wanna jump off roofs, bro. Nobody would've wanted no goddamn dress. It used to be crazy. You know, she ain't like ponytails and bar rats and stuff like that. I used to make her, you know what I'm saying, put on skirts and dresses. But she was so tomboyish, you know what I'm saying? She couldn't really get that up out of her. But um, yeah, as, as a young child, she was real sweet. She was smart. You know, she went to like prestigious schools. You know what I'm saying? I paid money per year for the, my kids to go to these certain schools. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? She was real smart, like knowledgeable about a lot of stuff. You know, some, some stuff I probably would have never figured out in, in my grammar school or high school days. But she was, she was real smart, real smart girl. Right. Real smart, pretty too. Yeah. Pretty too. Yeah, for sure. All right, so I looked it up, man, because I know y'all gonna be like, no, nah, that ain't da -da 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 -da. But I still never heard the Giotto, and uh, I see it's not butter, because I'm like, they would say butter if it's butter, but I never knew that she actually had a twin. I thought butter wasn't the twin, but was the twin type shit. So I didn't know she had an actual twin. Real smart girl. Right. Real smart. Pretty too. Yeah. Pretty too. Yeah, for I sure. used to tell her you are. Uh, you a pretty girl, but you're an ugly boy, you know. So we used to joke about that. Yeah. When she put on her little Tims and her button ups and you know, I used to be like, Man, I don't like that look, but as a female, you know what I'm saying, you top notch. Cause I'm like your mama, you know. Paperwork can be overwhelming. <laughs> That's crazy she said that because her mama give me uh tomboy vibes a little bit. Maybe it's a street thing, I don't know. But she gave me uh no, it's not a street thing. She just give me, she just give me time away vibes too, though. All right. And so uh, when I was doing my research, I learned that Ki's father died just a few months after she was born. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Um, this happened Easter Sunday, nineteen ninety-seven. Right. He was gunned down in front of his home. Right. Okay. Can you tell us the type of guy Ki's father was? Um. He was a decent guy, you know what I'm saying? Um, he really ain't bother nobody, you know, unless somebody bother him. Um, but, you know, kind of got caught up in that street street stuff, you know, in his area and that little gang stuff, you know. Uh, word was he got out on a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Fist fighting, the nigga couldn't take the ass whooping, you know what I'm saying, came back blasting, you know? So, you know, with that happening, um, it just kind of, you know what I'm saying, put a, put a, put a, put a, put a, put a, put a hole in me a little bit, you know? So yeah, and then, you know, it was Easter Sunday, you know what I'm saying? I was, I had took the kids, you know, to some family members earlier that day. I was going to take them back over to him. And then, you know, I got a phone call saying, you know, this so-and-so, we need you down at Cook County Hospital, you know? So yeah, that happened a couple months later. Yeah. Um. So, what I'm hearing is you have experienced some trauma in these Chicago streets. For sure. And thank God you still here to at least share your experiences with us. Yeah. You're able to talk about it. Yeah. You know? um, and shout out to you for having the strength and the courage to talk about these things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, 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 uh, like I, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's going on 10 years, you know, with my daughter, but. Um, I think with a lot of mothers that lose their children this way or to the streets, period, you don't really get a grieving process, you know, like just alone and because everybody don't want you to be alone and everybody is you okay and, you know, break down and that. But, you know, because I, I never really to this day, never really got that grieving process. You know, so it just comes in waves where like today I might be good, her birthday I might not be good or something like that. But um, I, I know she keeping me strong, you know what I'm saying? Like 
after that happened, everybody wanted me to fall and break and, you know, but I couldn't do it. I got other kids, you know, I got five. So, you know, I know she keeping me strong. You know what I'm saying? I, I hear in my in my ear, like, man, OG, you know what I'm saying? You got this. She's always say, OG, call me OG. If she wasn't saying ma, she's saying OG. Right. But, you know, she keeping me strong. And um, over the last 10 years, you know, it don't get no better. Like they say, time heals and, you know, it, it really don't. Cause you know, with, with the feeling when it come through to you, it'd be like it happened yesterday. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, even though 10 years is a long time, but the feeling like I could remember the phone call, I could remember getting to the scene, I could remember the, the, the doctors coming out in Northwestern saying, pronouncing her this, that we couldn't save her, like the Damn. look on their face. That shit definitely got to, that shit over her, bro. I can only imagine. Um, but like DJ, you said like the courage and the strength you gotta have to come and talk about this shit is next level, bro. Like, imagine really sitting there talking about your loved one, bro. The somebody that's oh, like really, really close to your heart. You don't really want to sit there and re-experience that shit, bro. That that shit. That shit is too much. That remind me of when, like, I don't know if y'all know, like, Pay the Fool, the dude Ace. When he tell his story, his shit sound crazy as hell. Like, how you really sitting here and just re-talking about that shit. That shit just crazy to me, man. That shit got to hurt all over again. And I realized it never, that pain never gets old and you never get over it. Because my, uh, my auntie. She was telling me about another auntie, which is her sister of mine. I mean, her, her sister. But she was telling me about her. And I never met her, but I heard that she was murdered, right? And she was telling me the story. And she still cried. And I wasn't even thought of yet. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't even thought of yet. And, and she was a kid. And she was a shorty at the time. And she still basically damn near cried about that shit. So that shit shows me what she's saying is accurate as fuck, bro. You never get over that shit. It never gets old. Some days you just be okay. You just try and like live life through that shit, bro. But that shit never gets old. You will never get over it, bro. It's always gonna be that whole. Out of Northwestern saying, pronouncing her this, that we couldn't save her. Like the look on their face. Like, you know what I'm saying? I Sometimes I even had dreams and you know what I'm saying? Different, you know, thoughts and stuff about it, you know, cause it's, 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 it, it be, when it hits you, it's like, it just happened, you know, but yeah, it's been a minute though. Word. And I'm glad you're sharing your perspective, right? Because as I stated earlier, you know, we hear about her name so much, but we don't know how this affects the family. You know, we don't know how the family really feel, you know, right. we just scrolling and, and, and liking and commenting and keeping right. it going, you know? Right. Um, but this is something that you have been dealing with for the last 10 years this month, Make. Um, how do you cope with dealing with, you know, grief? Well, you know, um, over the years, you know, I, I lost a lot of people that I love, you know. So, you know, when it's a child, it kind of it kind of hit different. But I kind of looked look to my other kids, you know what I'm saying, to help me cope, you know, and bring my spirits up, you know. And then, you know, sometimes I get on the internet and look at videos and, you know, pictures of her and stuff like that. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it just make it worse. But just depending on what type of reaction I'm having off of it, just depending on how I cope. So if I'm like real sad, I might bring the obituary back out. I might look through some videos just to hear her voice and, you know, something like that. Mm. Or, you know, I might talk to her twin, like, you know, laugh with him or something for a moment. Right. Just depending on how, what what type of wave it hit me at the time. Right, right, right. So, what are your thoughts of like, like Ki? Her name is just as big as like a Chicago rapper. Right. But she she never made a rap song. Right. You know, um, but it's like these 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 drill fans. They just so fascinated with the stories about it, with you being a mother, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, um, I like to, you know, like the people who really don't know that's like from somewhere else, but so fascinated with everything that, from that era and that hood and her, like, I just want motherfuckers to know, like, it ain't really like it's a facade. 
because people live this real life, but it ain't just all what they think it is. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you get in the field, it's hard to get out the field. You know what I'm saying? Once they say you in, only way out is, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't just, oh, we making um, drill music, we got guns in the video. Uh, you know, people live in everyday life, you know what I'm saying? Like that, where they gotta go outside strapped up, you know what I'm saying? Where they gotta watch every car ride pass and stuff like that. So a lot of people, you know, I be wanting them to know like, man, y'all could- It's not a motherfucking game, bro. These people laugh, not a motherfucking game. They really, really going through some shit. They really can lose their life at any moment. And y'all niggas is getting on these songs, getting in these, uh, just saying shit, thinking that you can goddamn respawn, bro. You ain't gonna respawn from this shit. You not like that. Don't be about that. Stop looking up to this shit. Be your motherfucking self, bro. That's it. That's all. So a lot of people, you know, I be wanting them to know, like, Man, y'all could comment and do all that. I take all the backlash, you know what I'm saying? Cause I lived it. So all the backlash and comments you want to give me, I'm all for it. Cause you don't know what I've been through. You know, everybody got a story. Some stories are more amazing than others where people, oh, I can't believe that, you know, and stuff like that. And then, you know, people want to point the finger. Oh, you a bad mother and this and that. And I, my kids, you know, never went without nothing. They didn't have to go rob none of that. They didn't have to do none of that. Anything they, you know what I'm saying, that transpired, that wasn't under a godly effect, they didn't have to do none of that. They never went without eating. They never had the lights off. They never went without clothes and shoes. You know what I'm saying? I kept a car, a crib, and a job. What Fuck a black woman is supposed to do, with or without a man. I kept a car, a crib, and a job. She popping it low key, bro, and that shows what she said. You know what I'm saying? That shows that um, these kids sometimes really just do what the fuck they wanna do. Like, man, my mama really got that shit. For example, let's just go back to Charleston White real, real quick. He say like, he, he damn near was living a lavish life. He chose to go outside and basically tweak like that. It wasn't his mama. Fuck you talking about, a lot of people really quick to point the finger at the parents sometimes. Cause I be seeing a lot of people on the Chicago shit like, get y'all kids, get y'all kids. Maybe they do be trying and can provide for their child. It's just that environment. When they go outside, them other niggas probably ain't got their mama and shit, bro. You feel me? So they go out and they following that shit because that shit look fun. And this my these my friends. You think I'm finna say, no, nah, nigga, um, I eat at night. So I'm not finna go and beat somebody a McDonald's ass or McDonald's worker ass to get some food or just do this to get some money to get some food. You know what I'm saying? Nah, they not gonna do that. They gonna follow their friends, bro. That's just what it is. She really saying some shit. She said, I keep a car, a crib, and a job. Fuck you tonight. Black woman supposed to do with or without a man. I kept a car, a crib, and a job. So, you know, they didn't never have to be out there in the streets for no reason at all. You know, so some of the choices they made, well, that she well, they made. they choices kind of like was a her own effect. You know what I'm saying? It was no real reason. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, I'm broke. Oh, my mom ain't give me this. It wasn't no reason for like that. But it's easy for people to comment and point the finger, you know, which I understand. I'm not mad at them, you know, because I know what I lived. I know what I did. I know how I live, you know. I paid off 490 On my soul, fuck what they talking about. These niggas never know. They just be on the outside looking in, bro. Point the finger. But I know that shit gotta be an over annoying, bro, for her to be like, them saying that shit. And she like, bro, I provided for my children. You don't know what the fuck you talking about. But I never actually even seen her on the internet bugging up on nobody and nothing. So she must do be brushing that shit the fuck off or it just never come on my feed. I don't know. Yeah. I lived, I know what I did, I know how I live. You know, so, yeah. So with you, you know, Obviously, being the mom, and that's your baby, you know. Uh, can't nobody tell you none about your baby, right? For sure. But can you tell us, like, when were, like, the early stages where you were kind of, like, learning, like, okay, this girl, she might just be something else? Um, I want to say maybe at about age 12, I start seeing, like, a change, you know what I'm saying? Change in appearance change in a, in a, in a group she was hanging with, uh, change in the music she was listening to, uh, 
you know, a lot of just a lot of small changes, you know, but when she was and to say that's some real shit like a lot of parents don't even peep shit like that she says a change in the music like damn when the fuck you start listening to what the fuck could i say i don't know i don't really know what the fuck i feel like a lot of music was kind of semi like not really on that but some had to make her like what the fuck make you listen to that shit name which makes her see a change in her child she paying attention to her her fucking circle all type of shit you know dressed like a boy you know, put on, you know, or whatever, or start messing with females. I was like, oh, okay, so you trying to go this route, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't not the, you know what I'm saying, for none she did. I ain't condone none of it neither. But if your child come to you and say, hey, I want to be this or that, you still going to love that child. You know, you just, you going to try and guide them the right way, but you still going to love them no matter what they turn out to be. You gon' you gonna love them regardless that came from your womb. You know, that was cut from your core, so you gonna love that child regardless. For sure. Yeah. So around twelve, you say her parents started changing. Um, and that's like that's like puberty, you know. Yeah. When, when yeah. preteen, you yeah. know. Um, a lot of kids start to learn what they really like and what they into, their interests and hobbies. Yeah. Um, and at this time, um K I was was dressing like a boy. Um, she was, you know, obviously listening to, well, I'm going to assume listening to a lot of, uh, gangster rap. Yep. Right. Um, and somehow, some way she became known as this female assassin, what the Chicago Sun-Times or somebody would call it, right? Right. Um, and, and, uh, major networks like A&E, you know, picked up a story, did a whole documentary on her. Right. Um, so like I stated before, this name, K.I., became bigger than some of Chicago rappers, right? right? So for you, after you learned that, you know, this is who she becoming, can you tell us when did it kind of like spiral out of your control to where you was like, okay, you know? Um, I want to say it started spiraling at about 14, 15. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kind of, so it started at like 12. So, you know, I used to do stuff like try and get her locked up, take her down to heart, grow mental institution, keep her for 30 days, you know, try and do stuff like that, you know. Then it kind of got to the point, because, you know, the system only can help you so much if, if, if they haven't actually done nothing. So kind of like at, uh, say like 14, 15, it kind of started getting real, real rowdy type like you know what i'm saying well you know i you know what i'm saying i ain't gonna say i let her go but i just kind of stay prayed up and kind of put it in the lord's hand but at the same time she was a child that was coming home every night so i would talk to her talk to her talk to her you know mention like hey this going on in the streets this that and the other you know and when she got to about that age, I want to say like 15 or so, that's when she got that, I don't give a fuck attitude. Okay. So before then, it was kind of like, I care, you know, but like 14, 15, um, I think she took a couple hard L's, you know what I'm saying? She lost, lost, a friends. Couple, lost a couple good friends, like brothers she grew up with. Right. And she kind of just like with that, she kind of was like, I don't give a f like that. Gee, do y'all not realize how young 14 is? 14, 15, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You know what I'm saying? That shit is young as hell, bro. To be going through what she going through for her, her mama to say, at 14, she was on some I don't give a fuck. At 14, she was lost fucking friends, bro, to the streets. So it's like, mom, I'm really not even trying to hear that shit because these niggas is over here doing whatever they finna do. I'm finna, they not finna get away with that shit. You know what I'm saying? We talking about a fucking baby, bro. A fucking baby. You you about finna go to high school? You in eighth, like eighth grade at 14, right? Like, come on, man. That shit just crazy as hell. And I ain't gonna lie. I kind of expected, maybe she, I'm pretty sure down like, I don't know. I kind of expected her to in the door basically be like no 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 but she kind of to me is confirming that 
Okay, I was with the shits. You know what I'm saying? Folks was really in the streets. This shit. I I damn this. I seen this shit firsthand too. I thought she I'm I'm glad she coming on here real and not really, you know what I'm saying? That's it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no more love. And you know, she loved her family, but as far as being out there, it was like I don't give a f mm -hmm. you know, it, it whatever happened, happened. Like and I used to be like, girl, I don't wanna bury you and you know what I'm saying, it's that and other and so and so just got killed and don't be, you know. But, you know, she had got it made up within herself, like, that's it, I don't give a fuck. She had them, 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 them couple L's she took, she took kind of like two, three hard L's, you know what I'm saying, we're losing some, a couple of the guys in the hood, and that really shook her, like, it changed her to kind of, kind of turn her heart cold towards everything out there. So, you know, I can kind of understand we're losing somebody close and you love and you know what I'm saying so when that happened it was just like that that put her in a mad state of just not giving a fuck about that street shit and she don't have nowhere near a fully developed brain bro no type of real consciousness bro so she don't death is the last thing that scared her like I don't give a fuck I, if I die or they die or whoever die I don't care a, about death that does nothing for me bro that's how fucking young she is, gang. Not saying some 14-year-old don't. They got their conscience, but she already in the streets. So she already seeing it. So she ain't scared of the consequences of this shit, bro. Yeah. So when she, you know, passed away a couple years after age 17, um, obviously this was a devastating moment in your life, you know. Um, but can you tell us how did it affect the whole family, like the rest of your kids, you know, her siblings, you know? Yeah, um, like her twin, of course. Um, you know, he was devastated, you know what I'm saying? Um, he was away at the time, but he did come to the funeral and, and the stuff like that. But yeah, like her old, like her older brother, her twin, her older brother, it, it hit them pretty hard, you know what I'm saying? And then like, you know, my younger siblings, it hit them hard as well. You know, they understood, but they didn't really, you know what I'm saying? They just knew like she was gone, but like the older ones, they really understood. So it kind of affected them a lot, you know what I'm saying? It, it, affected, it affected my whole entire family, like extended family, aunties, cousins, you know what I'm saying? Even my close friends who I went to grammar school with, high school with, you know, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, ex-boyfriends, and, yeah. you know, it affected a lot of people. A lot of people was, you know, just like, damn, you know. And then, like, I had a couple friends, you know what I'm saying, I used to be telling them, like, you know, my daughter, you know what I'm saying, they used to, oh, it can't be that bad. And then when that happened, they was like, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was like that. I was like, I was trying to tell you that, you know what I'm saying, it was like that, you know. But yeah, it affected a lot of people, you know. Don't get caught. That shit crazy, bro. On my soul. And I know that she, that, that's exactly how they were. Like, damn, G. So it really was that bad. We were trying to uplift you and shit, not even really knowing what the fuck going on in your crib. Like, definitely, definitely. A, uh, it's, like, it's like one of those uh, pivotal deaths in our, you know, community, in our city, in our, you know, Chicago culture, you know? Right. Um, and it's 10 years ago, you know, 10 years ago, next week, um, when you hear about who was responsible for the untimely death of your daughter, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, kind of when it first happened, I had already knew who was responsible from everybody being out there because she wasn't the only one that was out there. It was like 20 people on the scene. So from jump, I had knew who it was. Um, the internet and the world ain't know who it's supposed to be in, allegedly, until FBI dropped the files, public record. But um, in the beginning, I, I knew, you know, my. My, you know what I'm saying? I don't have no hatred or none of that towards nobody. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I don't, I don't feel either way swayed about it. Like, you know, cause losing a child period at, you know, whatever point of age or however it's, it's hurt. You know what I'm saying? My heart goes out to the mother, you know, and the family and the kids, 
you know, because they the ones, you know, going to be affected by it. But I didn't feel either way, either way about it, you know. Um, I honestly had, before the untimely death of the person, I honestly had forgave the person in my heart. You know, I used to tell people, I ain't mad at my daughter. I ain't mad at the killer. I ain't mad at nobody. You know, this is, you know, this life, it's, it's a sad, you know what I'm saying, situation and, you know, circumstance, but it's life. Like, you know, so I wasn't mad. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel me holding hatred in my heart what helped me to heal. So I wasn't mad at nobody. I wasn't, you know, when I found, you know, when I heard who it was from the jump, you know, I was like, I, right, you know, so a lot of when it came out to public, a lot of my just like, oh no, that ain't true. You know, to they got the I guess public record where it's in FBI files. Oh, and then you know, my would kind of be like, oh, so and so did this to your daughter. And, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I told y'all that from the jump. You know what I'm saying. I told the homicide detectives. You know what I'm saying. Who it was and where they was at. You know, and um, even though st after her death, stuff still went on. You know because. I don't know if they weren't, they weren't doing their job or what was going on, but it was still stuff going on, you know, so. They didn't care. That's all. They was never care, man. You know, I, I, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't you know, I, I pray for everybody, you know. You. I wonder did she meet him personally? Or did, because for her to even know who did it, she had to know. Now, well, she's saying she know exactly who did it. So I wonder, did she know him personally? You feel me? Like, she had to see him come around. I'm pretty sure that she hear the rumors about what they had going on type shit. Even though, I don't even know if that shit, no, I don't even think that shit true. I don't think, I don't think they ass was dating, but she had to see him before. Like, that shit be crazy to just like, I know exactly that motherfucker who did it, bro. You, me, them. Yeah. You know, so I don't, I don't. And I ain't saying the name because she ain't got there. I'm saying the name. So that's just what it is, bro. <laughs> feel like a certain kind of way where I want to be like F so and so and this and that, you know. It's just, you know, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. There was obviously a lot of speculation about, you know, who did it. And, um, you know, the news had came out not too long ago. Right. Um, about a, probably a couple years ago. Right. Mm hmm. Um, after the, you know. Because actually, the documentary, the person was in the documentary. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, then now that part kind of pissed me off a that little bit. I had to tweak you out, that right? Pit, now, I ain't going to lie. That right there, that part, it kind of pissed me off. Kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like at the time, a person was laughing about it. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, trying to act like they wasn't involved in it. You know, it was just like, now that part pissed me off. But, you know, because at first, you know, when they was like, it's a documentary coming out, you know what I'm saying? Because A&E ain't reach out to me about it. Okay. So that's why I wasn't involved. So whoever they talked to, that's who they reached out to. But my number ain't changed in 15 years. So I don't know why not. But, you know, they was like, yeah, it's a documentary coming out. So at first I didn't want to watch it because I was like, you know what I'm saying? I, so it took me a while, but I watched it all the way through. And when I did, and I seen that portion of it, I just was like, you got to be bullshitting me. Like, for real. The documentary on YouTube, I ain't never seen, I don't be really want to see that shit, though. I ain't gonna care, bro. Because that shit be depressing. That shit fuck with my energy and my vibe and shit. I'm trying to tell you, I seen the one on um Melly, bro. 051 Melly, bro. Oh, my God. I'm just like, gee. This shit is sad. Everybody young as hell, bro. Real. And then, you know what I'm saying, the statements that the person was making, like, you know what I'm saying, I tried to holler at a motherfucking ooh. So you mean to tell me you was going to fuck a stud? You was going to fuck with a stud? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's the only part I could say that kind of like made me just, you know, kind of um. But, you know, if I watch it right now today, it don't even bother me like that no more. But when it first initially aired, and you know what I'm saying, it came out, I was, I was a little, I was a little ticked about that. Yeah. I was a little ticked, but you know, time went on. It, it don't even bother me no more. Yeah. Um. Cause I, my the whole thing was like the audacity. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna have the audacity 
You know what I'm saying? These people done reached out to you because somebody had to reach out to you and say, we doing this woo woo. And I know for sure the only reason they reached out to the person is because they knew the person was allegedly involved. So I think all that was a setup. You know what I'm saying? The person is allegedly involved. You know, this the word on the street. The person is allegedly involved. Let's reach out to this person and see what they have to say. So I think that was a setup overplay for, overplay for the underplay. Like, and I don't even know why the person fell for no goofy ass shit like that. You know, they, 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 know, they know what the fuck going on. They gonna, they gonna have you come on national TV and say, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I, already, I already knew like that was a whole type of, um, what you want to say, like, not viewers, but like airtime and, you know what I'm saying, broadcasting uh, thing and uh, make it big uh, and we got so-and-so on here, you know, that was, that was ratings, yeah. ratings, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah but, you know, that was some ratings type shit because they knew who the f they was interviewing. For sure. And they knew what the, pro what the, what the involvement supposed to be in. So, For sure. yeah. But, yeah, it, it, it ticked me off in the beginning, but now I can watch it over and over again, you know what I'm saying, because it was like, other stuff in there, they was talking about a lady who was like a gang girl herself was in there. You know what I'm saying? It was other, you know, people on there too. So yeah, it don't, it don't bother me like that. But initially, yeah, that that kind of like put a put a stain. I can in imagine, it. you know. Yeah, that did. I can imagine um, knowing that this is the person that's responsible for my daughter's death, and he's on A and E. That's a major cable network. Right. But even still, I wouldn't give a damn if he was on Instagram right. or ABC. It don't matter, you know. Right, right. Um, the fact that he sat on camera and talked about it, I can understand how that would have made you or anybody that's, you know, close or related to K. I would feel. Right. Um, but I want to salute you one more time on your on your strength because I'm picking it up right now. Thank you know, you. as Thank you, you talking to me about it and walking me through it, you know. Thank you. Um, you are a very courageous person. So um, when the news came out that this is who was responsible, did you like feel any uh, sense of justice, satisfaction, knowing that you know, okay, they finally, you know, let it be known? Yeah, I, I, I felt like just a relief, like that the world knew. You know what I'm saying? This one just some that the hood was making up. You know what I'm saying? The world gonna know now. You know that I, I felt like okay. But my whole thing was, I guess they had to wait to at the at the effect because why y'all just ain't say that from the beginning, right. you know? And you had caught the person before with the same murder weapon that they used for my daughter. Why you just ain't say that before? You know what I'm saying? Or why you didn't even take them into custody on the sense of that? You know, so like I say, I don't know if somebody dropped the ball, somebody wasn't, wasn't doing their job, or it was all a whole setup to take my daughter out. You know what I'm saying? I got a whole lot of conspiracy theories I think about, you know, because really? I was hearing a lot of stuff in the hood. You know what I'm saying? And seeing and knowing a lot of stuff from the hood. So, you know. Because I heard about one conspiracy in which you felt like the police probably dropped Kyra off in the alley. Yeah, they dropped her off in um, Oak Block before. Right. They they literally. And that's something that the police do. Yeah, they literally that like. That shit is wow, G. Come on, G. What type of goofy, dumb, lame? <laughs> I don't even know what to say about some shit like that. That shit is like, bro. That shit is like why, bro. Why would you do that shit to her? She's a fucking baby, bro. I get it. Like, yeah, we, she think da da da. But that means y'all supposed to drop her off over there? She's a fucking baby. To don't anything can happen to her. Even obviously, y'all want something bad to happen to her. That shit goofy as hell. And that shit right there, like, make you like, well, these niggas, uh, O Block got fucking police working for them. You know what I'm saying? God damn, we gotta watch out. Really gotta watch out for the ops and the cops, bro. Come on. Right. They they literally. And that's something that the police do. Yeah, they literally like picked her up off the block, fuck with her, rode her around for a minute. But when they let, they took her in O block and they told her get out the cop. And she like, man, I'm not getting out in here. Ooh, 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 you know, and they made her get out. Yep. And of course, you know what I'm saying. They knew she ain't had nothing on her because they searched her before she got in the car. 
And um, she like, I'm not finna get, so she ended up getting out. So once she got out, you know what I'm saying? She, I ain't gonna lie, she took off. She took off running back to the block. You know what I'm saying? And she should have, bro. Like, that shit goofy as hell. We gonna make sure you ain't got shit on you. If you do, you get your ass booked. If you don't, guess what? We finna take you to, uh, to O Block anyway. And just really tell her to get out, bro. What the fuck? Where are these police at right now, bro? Like, y'all niggas is some goofy ass, lame, dumb ass niggas, bro. You know what I'm saying? And told the guys, like, man, these bitch ass niggas just dropped me off in, in there. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I say, like, I don't, I don't, it's, it's, it's crazy how everything went because it was like, you know what I'm saying? The police was doing shit. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I don't know if it was, if they was just targeting, you know what I'm saying, the EBT boys and the STL boys and all, you know what I'm saying, the FBG, you know what I'm saying? But y'all letting these other people over here do all this other stuff. Ain't nobody running up in there locking nobody up. They come blowing at them. They go blowing back, but y'all locking our people up. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it was just like, what the fuck really going on? You know, it's just some New Jack City type shit. On my soul. Know, but yeah, it's it, On my it, soul. It, they got every right to feel like that, bro. Every right. It only makes sense. Like, bro, what the fuck? They was, like in class, bro. Damn, I ain't the only one talking, bro. Fuck, you think we shot at them first? Now they came over. Y'all knew they was going to come shoot over here. And y'all niggas want to even know around. Get the fuck out of here. This shit goofy. Y'all dropping us off in their hood. And then I, that take me back to when Butter was on Vlad shit. He said whatever he said about 12, spending the block, or some shit like that. And then just, damn, bro. It, it went down with a lot of it about it, you know. But, you know, um, I want to say like a week or two, like maybe two weeks before her death, they had to roll on a block. So it was another incident involved with the police, you know what I'm saying, murdered someone in the area. So, you know, they had on some like FCPDK shirts, you know what I'm saying? So she had on one, so, you know, they rode on the block. The officer was like, take that shirt off. She was like, I'm not taking nothing off. You know, they got out on her, take that motherfucker shirt out now, ooh, made us come up out of her whole shirt. She ain't have on nothing but a bra, a sports bra. G, you can't report these niggas for? This shit's sad as hell, bro. You can't come, you can't come and tell me to take off a fucking shirt? Is you fucking serious? A fucking baby, bro. Once again, even though it don't matter the age, it don't, it don't matter the age, but the fact that she's still young, a fucking baby, you gonna come on the block and tell her to take off a fucking shirt? She can wear whatever the fuck she wanna wear on her shirt, bro. It ain't got your face on it. You don't even know 100%. I was like, nigga, this don't even stand for Chicago uh, Police Department, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Y'all, bo they bogus as hell. Why these niggas was not report? Maybe because nobody on the block had the knowledge of the harassment, but I get it. If you call, don't nobody give a fuck. Like, the police is harassing us, bro. Over a fucking shirt. Get out of here. They picked me up. I didn't even have nothing on me. I don't got no warrants or nothing. And they took me over there. This shit crazy. Who made us come up out of her whole shirt. She ain't have on nothing but a bra, a sports bra. You know what I'm saying? Now she out there, no shirt on. So one of the guys gave us a t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? They took the shirt off, ripped it up, whoa, stomped it all on the ground. Whoa, whoa. You know, it ain't no FCPDK and all that, you know. So, you know, that incident I felt like was a violation of human rights. You gonna make me get naked in the street for what? I ain't got nothing on me. You ain't caught me with no drugs, no guns. I ain't doing, I'm standing out here with my people. So I'll end up going down to police headquarters like this. This shit pissing me off, bro. I ain't even for the last time. This shit pissing me off, gay. Like, come on, man. 12, y'all bogus as hell. And y'all wonder why y'all want raises and goofy shit. Y'all doing goofy shit like this because y'all possibly is from O Block. Or possibly niggas paying y'all. Or y'all just, just hate us for some whatever reason, bro. Standing out here with my people. So I'll end up going down to police headquarters like two weeks, like a week and a half or two before that happened. You know what I'm saying? I was going to file a complaint with the fraternal order of police. You know what I'm saying? And then they was like trying to, they was sending me through all types of, you know, you got to go here and you got to do that and this and that and this and that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I kind of left it alone. You know what I'm saying? But I know what happened. You know what I'm saying? I went right, right down on 35th. 
man to the headquarters. I want to file a complaint on such and such officer. You know, they gave me the run around with it. So after I think they would give me the run around with it, I'm like, I, I, they don't I see care. what this is, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of left it alone, you know, and then like a week and a half later, you know what I'm saying, this happened to her, you know what I'm saying? Then at the time that it happened, she, she, that happened to her on the 64th end, like towards 65th. Still going south. Yeah, so she at the end of the block, like the last numbers, 40 some, 50 some. Right. But she walked past a police car, which was sitting at the other end of the block, the north end of the block, 64th Street. Okay. When this happened, they come through whatever, shots rang out, the police, you at the other end of the block. You know, Chicago block's not really that long. You can run down the block in less than two minutes. And it's like, Correct. how y'all ain't catch this person? He hit my daughter nine, seven times. He hit my daughter seven times. He hit butter. He hit butter one time. But he had let off more shots than that. It's just that what he had hit. Because he, matter of fact, he hit butter one time. He hit one of the guys on the porch in the foot one time. He hit my daughter seven times. So you couldn't bag up, because they was at the other end of the corner. You couldn't bag up and came down the block, and you know what I'm saying? So I just feel like all of that mixed in, it, you know, that part didn't sit right with me. But, you know, it, you know, it is, it's, that's Chicago. Yeah, for sure. The future like, is not just like ain't nobody doing no due diligence on this shit, bro. Like, I right, so the shots rang off. Your ass was up the street. Why the fuck you ain't at least catch some plates or a, get a fucking visual of who it could have been or that shit? Wow, bro, this shit make me. It's got me hot. I ain't gonna cap like twelve bogus as hell. I knew they been bogus, but this shit seemed like. They really is on fucking payroll, or they just probably got their ass bullied by some St. Lawrence, some St. Lawrence niggas back in the day, or got they bitch fucked by St. Lawrence nigga back in the day, or they mama fucked or something. I don't, I don't got damn no, bro. But them niggas is that shit crazy. They don't give a fuck. I know they not gonna go into the crawl, the fire. Obviously, they're not gonna do that. But damn, you tell me y'all don't got nothing. Y'all act like y'all probably didn't hear shit or. But you know it. You know it is. It's, that's Chicago. Yeah, for sure. And then how they even did duck, bro. Not saying this is like the same. The reason why, but that this just go down. And I'm not giving a fuck. He's sitting there and and y'all taking y'all sweet ass time and shit, bro. Come on. But you know it. You know it is. It's that's Chicago. Yeah, for sure. And you know the. Uh... I guess the police say they, they don't get paid to prevent crime. They get paid to react to it. You right. Know? And, and the thing was, it wasn't even that you ain't preventing it. You didn't even react to it. Mm, That's my neither. whole thing. You ain't even do your job that you getting paid for. So, of course, you wouldn't have been able to prevent it unless you set it up <laughs> or had, had the person, you know what I'm saying? You was on the person payroll. So, of course, you ain't going to be able to prevent it but you ain't even react to it. You know what I'm saying? Even after the fact of the funeral or the all that, and you catch this person two months later, finna come back on the block and, and, and take care of some more people, you catch them with the murder weapon and you still don't react and do your job. That's, that's my whole thing. You still ain't react and do your job. When your job was put, when it when all your evidence and all your stuff was put right in front of you. But you gonna wait till the person gone and then say, oh, that was the person. So you got paid to do that after the fact. Is what I I, I ain't understand. Right. So and So you, you had to deal with the Chicago police shenanigans, uh, the Chicago newspaper shenanigans, because I I learned that they were misquoting you, you know, throughout different articles, you know. Yeah. Um, and along with just, you know, going through personal grief, you know, um, your, 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 your family, you know, is, is your number one priority. You're a mom of five, you know. Um, so you, you lost one to the streets, but you got four more, right? Yeah. Um, so, so walk us through, like, you know, how, how did we get from here or there, I'm sorry, 10 years ago to right here. And now that you're able to tell us, you know, how, how, how did you make it here? Um, 
you know, after that with her, it kind of made me want to like, get just get away from Illinois altogether. Um, but you know, I, I just stay focused because them other kids, I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta stay on top of that for them. So I just stay focused. Pretty much a lot of times, I just threw myself into my job, like working extra hours, working two, three jobs. You know, I've been working on a book. I got a book coming out. So I've been working on that. I've been working on this podcast I got coming out called Mass. Um, it's called Mothers Against the Street Struggle, kind of just for the mothers who struggling with their kids in the streets or done lost their kids to the streets. You know, so I pretty much like over time been just working on things for self and, you know, helping a family and stuff like that. But um, I just, you know, I, cause, it, cause if I sit there and soak in it and weep and mourn all the time, it'll overwhelm me, it'll consume me. And I, I don't want to be consumed by that. You know, she's gone, I'm here. We all got a life to try to live, so. I just put my focus into a lot of other positive things, you know, spend a lot of time with my kids and, you know what I'm saying, let them know I love them all the time, stuff like that, you know, our internet here and there, you know, stuff like that, interviews, stuff like that. I did an interview two or three months after that happened with her. I did an interview with Miss Queen. Right. I went to school with Miss Queen um, nephew, so I had got on Miss Queen and you know, talked about it. I was still kind of shook up about it then, but you know, I was able to get through, I was able to get through you that. Carried it well. Yeah. Yeah. Every quest needs a challenge and every hero. I'm still hot about the police. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, bro. Like that, I can't get that shit out my head, bro. That interview is actually what led me to reaching out to you. I had stumbled upon it kind of like on accident, literally just scrolling. And um, yeah, I sat and watched it. Um, and when I reached out to you, I, I could feel you over the phone. You you on the phone, like, man, how the hell, how the f this nigga get my <laughs> You see what I asked you? You sound like, I put your number in? No, no, no. no hold on, hold on, how hold on, the hold fuck on, hold you on. get my number? Like, hold on, hold Cause on. Because I had some other people contacting me about some other projects and shit too. And I'm like, oh, okay, now everybody's going to be trying to call me. No, no, you know, but yeah. It, it 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 was um I'm glad you reached out to me though I appreciate it I yeah, appreciate sure. it. I did so I did, I had did my I was already following you and stuff so I had already did some background checking on you you know oh you know what I'm saying some of the YouTube or some of them you just can't mess with but you know what I'm saying you're a pretty decent guy you decent Thank you. yeah Thank you, you decent I I I you know what I'm saying I even you know what I'm saying mention you to a couple you know a couple of guys I know they like oh yeah for him he he cool he cool you're pretty good even though you know you had. You know, butt on here and all that Italian beef and all that. But <laughs> you cool, you know what I'm saying? Right, you're right, a pretty right. cool individual. So you know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't I ain't had no beef with you. That's good. Okay, speaking of buddy, you know that is like our favorite guest at this point on the show. Yeah. We, I haven't interviewed anyone as much as I've interviewed FBG Butter, right? So um he obviously brings up your daughter a lot. Um most of the world believes that they are actually brother and sister because there's a picture of them and they look alike when you look at them and you know yeah, as much they as they got he, a favor. They don't look alike, but they got a favor. Right. And as much yeah. as he claimed her and he got KI tatted on his face, you know, uh what what's You ain't finna tell me he ain't her brother at all. I'm thinking maybe they got the same daddy or some shit, bro. Come on, talk to me, gang. This nigga not her brother at all. They just was twins from the streets type shit. Damn. They just fucked me up. They just fucked me up, bro. Does yeah. he claim her and he got KI tatted on his face, you know? Uh, what, what's, what's your thoughts on Butter? Well, I'm here to let you know that it's not her actual twin brother. No blood relation at all. Eh, eh, eh. Put the, eh, this from Chicago. Yeah, on that up. Gee, no. This how you know, like, I'm really just, like, <laughs> getting into this shit. Because I, like, growing up in the city, I never really cared for the, the shit that was going on. I literally was there for the music. Like, I was literally there for the music. The That's it. Any of that beef shit, I never looked into that shit for real. The only thing I really knew about was probably the JoJo situation. That was probably, like, 
I only think I really probably at the time knew about. But anything else, I didn't care. Like I said, it took me time, years to find out that Tuka was actually a person on my soul. But anything else, like, I just wasn't really into that shit, bro. But this nigga not even her brother at all? Not even her cousin? God damn. But you know, that is not her actual twin brother. No blood relation at all. Eh, eh, eh. Put the, man, this from Chicago. <laughs> yeah, on there, the um, sound effects. But yeah, um, but buddy, that's like my son, though. You know, that's like my son, you know what I'm saying? His OG, I know his OG, been knowing him for years. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It, it's been times, you know, I might have been hungry. Him, him and his OG done fed me, you know what I'm saying? Gave me money or something, you know, just as a sister looking out for another sister, you know? So I, I, I ain't really got no gripes with Butter. You know, he funny, he funny as hell, you know? But um, yeah, uh, you know, I ain't really got no gripes with him at all. You know what I'm saying? Some, some of the stuff I done seen him get interviewed about, you know what I'm saying? My whole thing is like on a snitching thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you was gonna snitch anyway, why you ain't snitching in the beginning? You know what I'm saying? That's my whole thing. I don't, I don't care if you, tat what they call, I don't care if you're a tattletale. I don't care. I done told on my foe too. It's gonna be me or you, oh, it's gonna be you, cause I'm finna tell. I'm not finna go to jail. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's, you know, some people, people tell shit and lies and all that shit every day. You know what I'm saying? But my whole thing is, if you was gonna tell all this shit you told, just recently, not just on the blog, but to these people in court, on this testify because of this other shit, why you just ain't say that from the, why you was playing like playing stupid in the beginning? Like you ain't know who it was and, uh, okay, I understand. You probably ain't wanna, you ain't want the after effect. Now I'm up trying to get at you or whatever and all this and all that. Okay, that's understandable. That's understandable, you know, cause if you feel for your life or something like that, yeah, you might not say nothing then. But my whole thing was like, dude, don't come out with you. Don't come out with all of this and that. You know, keep finish keeping your mouth shut about the situation. You know, but hey, that that you know what I'm saying. Like I say, butter, that's like a son to me. You know what I'm saying. He done slept in my crib. I done slept over they crib. You know what I'm saying. Him and Ki, they was tight. They was super tight when 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 Gi went away for a little while. She clicked on butter, clicked up. They was tight as hell. Like, that was like freaking frat. They used to get on my nerves so much. much. I was like, get y'all ugly glass up out of here. Like, I'm sick of y'all, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, and then, you know, his mama, you know what I'm saying? She definitely looked out for K.I. a lot. You know what I'm saying? All the time, that was like, that's like her daughter. You know what I'm saying? She looked out for my baby a lot. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't got nothing against nothing but love for them people, for Butter and his mama. I love them, I love them. His OG and butter, I love them. You know what I'm saying? And then, cause like, I feel like a lot of times, you know, butter might've saved my daughter. You know what I'm saying? So I don't got, I don't got nothing against the man. You know what I'm saying? I know that's one of your special guests. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want him to come back, you know, finish his little, you know, so I ain't, you know, I ain't got, he could come sit with me. He could come sit with me. He wanted to come sit with OG, he can come sit with OG. I ain't got nothing against him, but you know, only thing I had to look right with him about was all that stuff. You know, motherfuckers putting out in the air after the fact. You know what I'm saying? Which you should have just been up front. Like, cause I feel like if, if he would have did all that snitching in the beginning, that probably would have saved a lot of people. Like I think Doug probably would have still been here. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people I felt could have got saved if a lot of motherfuckers would have just came with the forefront. But- That shit fake deep though. I ain't gonna that shit fake deep. If you would have got motherfuckers booked, Motherfuckers would never been who they was to do what it was they did. You know what I'm saying? That shit kind of is deep, bro. I ain't gonna lie. But we can't go back in time. That's the worst thing about this life shit, bro. We can't go back and, and make shit right and fix shit and do shit twice, bro. But I hear where she coming from for, with that shit, bro. I saved if a lot of motherfuckers would have just came with the forefront. But us holding shit in and oh yeah well, like we had some like my was telling me when that happened with cat oh we gonna do this we finna drill we finna do that i used to tell them don't drill let you know what I'm saying? i pray let god handle it you know what i'm saying don't do no drilling but you know the hood they want to react you know what i'm saying i said tell my just just let it you know let it be you know so you know i understand him not saying anything then because want the drill and then you know he was in fear for him and his family life too because like I said he got shot at the time too 
I feel I'm not saying nothing, you know what I'm saying, but don't come with the whole steel on that. Leave some to the imagination, boy. Don't get all the way naked. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I but I ain't got no I ain't got no gripes against but I love butter. Right. I love I love Italian beef and Pepsi too. That's one of my favorites. I, I love butter. I love butter, but man, I love you, butter. For real. <laughs> For real, he, him and my daughter, they was, they was like, th- like they was so much like this that everybody thought they was twin. Thought they, they was, was blood, that everybody right. thought that. For you sure. know what I'm saying? And motherfucker, you know, bro, sis, well, everybody really, the whole entire world, United States, think that man is her twin, but he's actually not. He's not blood related, but he close, he like family. And him and my <laughs> daughter, they was like freaking frat in them streets. Now I ain't saying even saying nothing wrong with him saying it. I just thought I just truly thought that myself. You know what I'm saying? I truly thought they was like twins, but no, I I thought they was twins, but not twins. But they so close that he's saying my twin, but I thought they had like the same daddy type shit, like I said earlier. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's just what's fucking me up. I ain't tripping off him still continuing to call her his sister or her, his twin. But I just truly thought this whole time they was blood related, bro. They they probably went on a lot of hits together. You know what I'm saying? But hey, I don't got nothing against the man. I don't I don't judge him for none. But I I do want him to stop speaking on GI like he crazy though. Straight up, just just on the strength of everything, cause he know. If he was, you know, like that with K.I. and that's his twin and all that, why would you speak on this girl real twin negatively or say anything about, you know what I'm saying, whatever the, whatever you saying, you know what I'm saying, it's internet shit all over. So just, you know what I'm saying, if he could just chill with that, because I don't, I don't want to make them enemies, you know what I'm saying? Well, he going to make them enemies, but, you know, I don't want them to be enemies because they came up together, you know what I'm saying? G.I. done hung with them too. You know what I'm saying? And roll with them and all that. You know what I'm saying? So don't, you know what I'm saying? Even if you ain't partake, partaking in being his homie right now today and hollering at him on the phone, whatever, don't, don't, don't sneak this to man. You know what I'm saying? Because that is actually her real twin blood brother born 13 minutes apart. So don't, don't, don't do that part. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, butter is all the love and it's all the love in the world for me. I might go see him after this interview. Yeah, because yeah. I was just going to tell you my next uh, comment was going to be, uh, I know for sure that Butter does have a real strong love for your daughter. Like, yeah. He loved K.I. Yeah. Um, I haven't interviewed Butter in a while, but I just talked to him a couple days ago on the phone, and he said something to him that was kind of heartfelt. He said, man, I wish my sister could call me. I wish I could send her some money or write her a letter. Like, like I wish she was locked up, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like on some shit like, you know, rather right. or being locked up than, right. you know. And, um, but you know, when he said it, it kind of, you know, I, I, I felt that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so that, like that, that'd be my reason for having these type of conversations in my interviews because, man, you never know what the next person going through and we right. all going through something. Right, and I know he, fu- I know he fucked up behind that shit because he was there. When it happened, he was with her. You know what I'm saying? So I know that shit fucked him up. You know what I'm saying? I know, and like I said, they were like freaking press. So, you know, like losing somebody close and then you in the mix of it. You know what I'm saying? I, I know that, you know, I know that affected him. You know what I'm saying? Praises out to him for him being strong. Cause yeah, I know, I know that fucked him up a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's what's up. Well, look, Mama K, I we ain't gonna hold you too much longer, you know. Um, you 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 shared with us enough, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. You see what I'm saying? Um, cause I love what I do, you know. So nowadays, I be grateful when people show up and assist me with doing what I do. No know? problem, anytime. Any uh, any shout outs or closing remarks? Um, no, just be on the lookout for my book coming this year and uh, my podcast, Mothers Against the Street Struggle. Um, it's going to be bi-weekly. I'm going to have uh, some of the mothers from the area that lost their kids, like Mama Doug, Mama Tuka, you know, a few more others that I, you know, went to school with, lost their children, you know what I'm saying, to the streets. So, you know, it's called Mass, M-A-S-S, Mothers Against the Street Struggle, because, um, 
I want us to go back to the old days where they say it takes a village to raise a child. But see, all the villages are broken now. So, you know. And they led bad children. Like, it's just, I don't know about other cities, but Chicago is fucking wild when it comes to these, these shorties running fucking off. They off the fucking leash, bro. Cause like when I was coming up, the neighbor with my ass, the teacher with my ass, everybody, you know what I'm saying? But now you can't touch these people's kids. Cause you know, everybody gonna come out with a gun. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's just a lot of senseless stuff going on with the streets and the youth. And you know, not just in Chicago, but around the world. I just, you know, I wanna make some type of impact, you know, if it don't reach one teen or, you know what I'm saying? Somebody to say, man, I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want my family to bury me. You know what I'm saying? They don't realize, and nobody realizes how hard it's affect to you standing over that little one in a casket. And for what? Cause somebody ain't like you cause you was with this person or you with these people or you from this block or you from this area. You know what I'm saying? It just shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. For sure, for sure. And um, in closing, is there a message you could leave for the young ladies that's growing up in the streets? Uh, she might be a teen mom, or she might uh, have a child that's out in the streets and she don't know how to really, you know, deal with it. Uh, what, what's the message you can leave to that woman? Um, I'll tell you, you know, try and reach out and get all the resources you can. Um, Keep your head up though, you know, don't, and, and don't abandon your child. Even if your children doing this and that, if you know, you know, your child doing something and you're not able to intervene, see if you can get some type of authority figure or just somebody to intervene where, you know, they don't, they don't have to choose, you know what I'm saying, the streets as an option. You know, even though they probably going through something at school and, you know, because nowadays these kids can't even go to school. It's just all, all bad. But just keep your head up, stay strong. And one, one thing for sure, don't give up on your child no matter what. For sure that. Well, there you have it. I think we just composed a classic. So I want to say thank you to Mama K.I. Shout out to Word T Productions. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Man, tell me if and shout out to Lil Bro at Animosity. Hey man, yeah, that was a good interview, bro. That was a different side that I never even heard. It did fuck me up about the butter thing, and I want to end on that that last message what she said about the mothers. Um, I know that it's easier said than done, bro. But if you can, if you can move, I say move. Like, for real. Why? Especially if your child is young, move. Don't be in the hood if you can. Like, for real. But what she said also about the resources is a good one. Like, try and put good figures, if you can, in your child life, man. Somebody that they think is cool or somebody who kind of, like, can relate, like, streetish, but can show them, like, that shit lame, man. You know what I'm saying? Type as if they favorite rapper who fake as hell with this shit was teaching them some shit type shit. But yeah, that shit fucked up. The police, some bitches. I hope y'all bitch asses is, is at least not even in the, on the streets no more. Even though I know it's a lot more of you dirty fucking cops out there, bro. That shit wild as hell that y'all was even playing like that, bro. Like I would ask how can y'all sleep at night, but it ain't shit to y'all, bro. It ain't shit to y'all. Y'all doing that shit on the regular. Y'all couldn't wait to wake up and go fuck with St. Lawrence. She's third in St. Lawrence. Y'all just couldn't wait. It's just crazy as hell. Um, yeah, but um, I, I'm happy he brought her on to talk about KI2. They ain't get um, too deep into it, but she did not deny that her child, she didn't get on that. My child, golly, my child didn't do this. Da, 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 da. She, she kept it real with us as much as she could keep it real. With keeping in respect on her daughter's name and not like overly getting into what most of us know already. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you don't, you got to research it type shit. But uh, yeah, y'all let me know what y'all think. And catch y'all in that reaction.